focus on the Philadelphia Eagles. What stood out to us yeah. most in their win over the 49ers? I thought the, the, the Purdy situation obviously was paramount, mm -hmm. but the Purdy yeah. situation might not even mattered. And I know Niners fans said, no, wait a second. I don't know if any team was beating the Eagles yesterday with that defensive line and that pass rush. I just felt like every single time that they needed to play, the pass rush was there, and that's what it's been all season. Hassan Reddick has been an unbelievable story this year. He's been bounced around the league. As we know, he's with the Cardinals. He was with the Panthers. He's signing one-year deals here and there. Ends up with the Eagles, and he's one of the elite pass rushers of the sport, and he saved his best for last. Again, unfortunate situation with Purdy. It's a great what if. Um, Niners hung in there for three quarters. Talked about the roughing the punter was kind of like, all right, we just can't. There's no way we're winning this game. There's no thing that can happen. But I'm not sure if Purdy was ever going to get going with this defensive line. Look what they've done this season. Um, as a pass rush, they've put up historic numbers. And they're, they're on the verge, if you want to combine playoffs, if they have five sacks in the Super Bowl, we're talking about the greatest mm. sack team ever. That's and incredible. It, and that's an amazing stat for a team that does not get talked about that way. We often talk about the run game and what they do on the offensive line. The defensive line's been amazing. So... Um, the game doesn't have an asterisk to it, but it kind of feels weird even like piling on and being like, they kicked their butt. I, I know the quarterback situation was, was everything. And yet, let's not take away from how dominant that Eagles pass rush has been all season and what Hassan Reddick and those boys did yesterday. That for sure. Also, the Eagles hung 31 points on the best defense in the yeah. league. They scored 31 points. But it's a pretty big what if. It's huge. Brock Purdy never lost a game. They, their last loss was on October 23rd. We don't really know. Um, this is how strange, let's just call it unique, this game was. Okay. That's a more positive. I found myself in the second half Googling through the Niners depth chart to say, what if McCaffrey gets shaken up? Who plays quarterback after McCaffrey? <laughs> Does, do, do we switch Debo's helmet? Just let him run around? Juwan Jennings. Is, Juwan Jennings? Plays high school quarterback. Okay, yeah. so you put in a high school quarterback <laughs> in the NFC title. That's how weird it was. This, the game from the get-go, <clears throat> what you didn't see in the highlight, on the second snap of the game, the Niners run defense, Fred Warner goes down, yeah. and he's kicking his legs like, oh, I think Warner might be out for the game. He comes back. Then you have the Devontae Smith non-review, which is massive and also inexplicable, and I think a huge letdown. Everything about Devontae Smith's body language was saying, challenge this. He, he knows it's not a catch. He's doing this thing, and they're like, run the play, run the play. Then Bosa goes down. <laughs> Bosa gets clipped on the sideline. You're like... He's grabbing his knee. I think Bosa might be out. Mm -hmm. That is after Purdy. The best play going on early on for the Niners was the camera wire, apparently blocking one of the Eagles' punts, which they couldn't prove, even with videotape. And that's not even to speak of Brock Purdy getting injured. It was a, a start-to-finish, uh, played on a burial ground type game for the 49ers. Look, the Eagles are awesome. I think they were the best team left in the Final Four. I think they're the best team left in the Final Two. And the reason Brock Purdy got knocked out is because they hit the crap out of him with their pass rush. He didn't get injured falling off the bus. He was knocked out of the game by the Eagles, and credit to the Eagles for that. I would have liked to see a real football game. This didn't feel like a game. Yeah. It felt like, well, can we just flex Bengals Chiefs into the 4 o'clock window now? Because this game's over, and it was. Bizarre ending. The Eagles are an amazing team. I would have liked to see the Niners get to throw a few more punches. I, yeah. It's just terrible. I agree with you both. It, it, it's a tricky game to break down because you don't want to take away yeah. from what the Eagles were able to accomplish. But, yeah, the 49ers, you're like, man, if, if, if it had gotten past the first quarter with Purdy, they still felt like they were hanging around. But the Eagles decided, I think, between the first and second quarter, like, we're just going to hold on to the ball, and we're going to get the hell out of town, and we're in our own town. Yeah. They had the ball for 37 minutes. On the, they had 25 first downs. If that doesn't scream, oh, we see how this is going, we see how just the gods are against the 49ers today, let's just hold the hell onto the ball, Jalen Hurts understood the game plan. Yeah. What I've loved and appreciated most about this Eagles team is every game feels different. The identity of the team looks different every day. Some days, and I think Jalen Hurts feels it. Halfway through the first quarter, by the end of the first quarter, he's like, okay, I have a sense that we need to be running the ball more today. I need to be running the ball. Oh, you need me to have a couple explosive pass completions? Fine, I can do that too. He has an incredible feel and touch for the game that puts his team, and I swear, the way he runs a game, it affects the defense as well. The entire team and game for the Eagles is lifted by the way Jalen Hurts handles okay. himself at quarterback. It's it's contagious. Yeah. It has this powerful leadership quality to it that I think is remarkable. We'll, we'll get into his story for the next two weeks, but what Jalen Hurts accomplished up until yesterday in his football career has been amazing. Mm. What he is about to do, playing in his first Super Bowl ever, with what he came from, 
mm -hmm. is remarkable. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about it too. But man, he just has this gift to control the narrative of a game and have control of his team that I think hugely impacted the Eagles yesterday. Yeah, without a doubt. You go into that game and you're looking at it, and we said it last week, it was like, these are two juggernauts, and we're so excited to see mm -hmm. the matchup up front and what this game is going to be like. And we need to get a chance to see that. And you don't want to take anything away from the Philadelphia Eagles. And a ton of credit to the 49ers because this game was close. Even when Brock Purdy mm -hmm. gets injured, it's 7-7. Seven seven seven. Seven. And the Eagles go down score to make it 14-7. And the 49ers are driving until Josh Johnson drops the ball. And then it kind of yeah. just went downhill that from that play. point. That was the that play. Was and then you combine the next drive, the 49ers on defense have multiple penalties, which lead to a touchdown. But what I give the credit to the Eagles on is like James Jamie just said, they find different ways to win. One game they may beat you because A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith go off and they catch some bombs down the right and left mm -hmm. sideline. Yesterday wasn't that. It was just like, all right, the 49ers are down bad right now. Their quarterback situation, everything they have going on, let's just run the ball. And what you saw yesterday, you heard Greg Olson talk about it, and he would say on one of the touchdown runs, look at the two double teams up front. And for guys watching, girls watching, you hear that, and then you look at two offensive linemen, and you see them moving one person together, and it's just like, my goodness, they're moving somebody beyond their will. And their offensive line has been talked about all season long. And we saw it yesterday. And I know this 49ers defense was beat down because when you're out there playing defense and your offense can do absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. you wear down. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the, the Philadelphia Eagles rush for over 40, 140 yards, multiple touchdowns. Yeah. That Niners defense, there's just nothing to do. You're sitting on the sideline, you're watching your offense. Purdy attempted four passes. Mm -hmm. You're out there on defense, you're like, we got to find a way to make a play. Philadelphia didn't allow them mm. to. They continued to run, whether it was Hurts, whether it was Sanders, whether it was Gainwell. They found a way to get yards on the ground, and that proved a way to win the game. Not just, the, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, just the, the one seed for them was so important because now you have all these guys healthy. You've got Lane Johnson healthy, yeah. you've got Jalen Hurts healthy, and you see. Uh, they come in there and they're like, all right, we earned this home field advantage. Yeah. We earned the week uh -huh. off. They look like they're the healthiest team in the league, and they look like they were the most prepared yesterday. Yeah. Eagles rush for 163 yards a game when Jalen Hurts plays in it. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he ran for his 15th rushing touchdown as a quarterback, which set a record in the NFL most yesterday. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. ever, passing Cam Newton. All right, coming up.